Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Acoustic Paradiso. I'm joined by Ben. Hello. Uh, and today we are going to delve into the topic of how to get the best sound from your acoustic guitar when you're either playing live or recording it. Yep, it's, um, it's a big can of worms. It is a huge <laughs> can of worms, isn't it? Um, loosely speaking, what we've decided to do is get um, a Dreadnought acoustic guitar, a nice kind of mid-price Dreadnought acoustic guitar that is loaded with a Piazzo pickup and a contact pickup as well yeah. that we can mess around and blend with. We've got two microphones. One, we've used an SM57, which is a sort of a more affordable, general yeah. purpose, dynamic microphone. Could use that for a bucket load of different uh, applications. Um, and then we've got a, a more probably, certainly higher end, but typically a microphone that would be more of a niche condenser studio product for yeah. recording acoustic instruments. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, a Neumann, it's a classic studio mic, it's great. Yeah. Then we've got two uh, acoustic guitar amplifiers, a very affordable one from Fender, the Acoustasonic 40, and uh, a more professionally priced one from AER called the Compact 60. And you will hear, as we go through this, a whole gamut, hopefully, of useful tones, some just DI'd from the amplifier, some trying to capture the element of the room sound with the amplifier. Microphones, gonna show you what happens as you position microphones differently. And we'll just talk about Ben's experiences of, you know, live and in the studio okay. and getting that sound. So yeah. let's, as a reference, let's let people hear what we think is probably the most natural sound of this acoustic guitar, which will just be the Neumann and maybe a little bit of room mic just yeah. as a so here's your sort of this is really what the guitar yeah hopefully our ears think that this sounds like here's your kind of bass line So that's the guitar. And as I said, we didn't go and pick something crazy expensive. No. It's just mid-price, <clears throat> a nice spec to guitar. So, okay, Ben. Yep. Let's talk live first. Okay, so live. you're either out with your duo or in a band or a solo or something like that. Yeah. What would you typically do in a live scenario? My, well, my preference it's always to use a microphone wherever possible. Mm -hmm. So if I'm playing, you know, my, most of the stuff I do is a duo, uh, and we just use one microphone between us. Old school, old school, teen advert style. Yeah, just one sit round. big, large diaphragm condenser. And if we want to get louder, we move closer. And if we want to get quieter, we move further away. Um, and that works, that works really, really nicely, provided, <laughs> there's a lot of caveats here, provided you've got a good engineer, yeah. a nice room, and, there's not too much background noise. Yeah. So it's great, it's perfect for a duo, but if you want to, as soon as you start adding, you know, drums would be the big one. Yeah. It becomes fairly impractical. Okay. Um, which is why, you know, why pickups are a great thing. And I know people use pickups in the studio too, but for live, I think a pickup is a really yeah. good thing I, to have. I think you're right there. I mean, I, I, you're absolutely right. I remember seeing, um, Jerry Landreth or Brothers mm. Landreth, oh, wow, yeah. same thing. So they all get round and like, you know, they were doing all the harmonies, acoustic, I think maybe the drummer's using a shaker or something. Yeah. It's just one microphone. But the room had, the, the, no, the noise in the room had to literally disappear. Like the yeah. audience has to just be like, yeah, yeah. So, sounds great. But you're right. I think you'll see most guitar players mm. will take the internal pickup of their guitar. Yep. They will either just plug, give it straight to the, the Absolutely, plug it straight yeah. into their PA. <clears throat> um, or they'll plug into um, some form of, of dedicated acoustic amplification. Yeah. Might be a pedal with a DI or something like that, a preamp in there, or an amp. So let's start with just the Piazzo pickup on the guitar. So we'll yeah. turn the contact mic off. So there's no, yeah, there's no none of the transducer in this. This is just the the kind of undersaddle Piazzo, which is like the you know, the most traditional type of acoustic pickup. Is now, I don't, yeah. uh, right, so what, this is the important bit, because we'll need the, the <laughs> editing team to do this. Yeah. There's lots of different ways that, that we'll be able to show you how this amplifier sounds. Mm -hmm. So I guess the first one that we'll do is a pure straight DI. 
So that means that uh, we're not capturing any of the essence of the sort of the room reflections and what it's like in here. It's yeah. just purely and simply the pickup straight into the amp and then out the back of the amplifier. So not using the speakers in it at all and straight into our recording interface. Yeah. And that's the sound. So um, Ben, if you wouldn't mind now, let's just play and audience just hears the DI from the AER. Cool, and that's just with the PSO pickup. Cool. I mean, I think the AER sounds wonderful in the room, but of course, we, did, we weren't, you weren't hearing <laughs> no, that, that's you right. were in the DI. Let's just jump across to something more affordable and we'll do exactly the okay. same thing. So this is the DI now from the Fender Acoustasonic. Um, let's see if it's radically different okay. or not. doesn't sound as good as the AER, but it still sounds it, good. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's cool. The, the thing, uh, I think with the traditional under saddles is, I mean, they've come on a long way. Yeah. But they have a tendency to be a bit yeah. quacky. Very bright. Very, yeah, very toppy. Yeah. Uh, and because they're just capturing the string at the bridge, you don't get mm. any of the kind of sound that radiates from the rest of the top. Yeah. Which can. I think that's for me, the most, compelling reason to buy a dedicated acoustic amplifier yeah because if you just take that straight into your computer interface or into a pa yeah. it is just the harshest brightest way you can kind of amplify yeah. your acoustic guitar whereas into an acoustic amp the, the way that it's eq'd will hopefully compensate for a little bit of that yeah you've got a bit more control over um, it um so let's just jump back to the AER now and what we'll do because we can on this acoustic guitar is we'll just blend in a little bit of the contact mic to go with the piazzo so that should start to now pick up so this, this is an internal mic in the guitar that yeah. should start to pick up some of that resonance that you rightly say the piazzo yeah. doesn't capture so i'll play a chord and kind of blend it in so yeah. you can hear it coming we'll in. stay with the di sound so you're still just hearing this di from the AER. so i'll, I'll do this and then i'll, I'll wind it in slow. Mm. So immediately. There's a lot more of, yeah, the, the kind of body response. Yes, and you can hear though, and this is one of the first issues, I can hear now, even at this relatively low level, that that contact mic now is beginning to feed back. Yeah. It's picking up even my voice sitting over here, I can hear it slightly. So that's quite often I think on these guitars, particularly on the Sire, why it's uh, uh, not a completely desirable, or maybe desirable is the wrong word, it's not the most ideal pickup for a live scenario. The Piazzo is the most, you know, it's it's the least likely to feed back. Yeah. It's give you that, that you know, it's it's ideal really for live. It just doesn't yeah. sound I mean, brilliant. When I, I know when I play live, because I've got a dual system in my guitar and I start with a kind of pickup and then I blend in as much of the mic as I can get yeah. away with on the gig. Yeah. Uh, and it just helps to give it a bit of that kind yeah. of more acoustic sound. Um, but it does, as you say, you can run into feedback issues, which is why you get notch filters on a lot of, you know, acoustic yeah. gear, because you can take out the hot frequencies that are feeding back. Well, let's stay with it. Let's maybe just like blend 50% of that contact yeah. mic in, so it's not too much. We'll go back now to comparing, again, an affordable acoustic guitar amp with a more expensive one. But now you're going to hear, hopefully, what it sounds like in the room. So you're going to yeah. hear, uh, this is a bit more of a challenge for our sound guys, but they're gonna, we're using a, a pair of stereo mics in the room, maybe a little bit of a lapel mics, mm -hmm. almost like anything basically that's in the room <laughs> that, that makes it sound like we're in the room. So here again is the AR. I should mention as well, all the reverb that you hear, if we're plugged into the amps, the reverb is built into the amplifier. And when we go over to using the mics, we'll blend a little bit of just reverb in yeah. from uh, our uh, software, like Logic or something. Anyway, here's the <laughs> AER in the room. Okay. <laughs> pretty 
good. It's, a uh, it's, it's I think it's the best acoustic guitar you can buy. Yeah. Uh, but we've EQ'd this completely flat. There is um, a, a pre-shape, so I've just pressed that in. Now this is like an AR. Uh, oh, I pressed the wrong you one. You pressed the shape. <laughs> this is like a, an AR button that just goes. We think this sounds nice. Button. Okay. Um, here we go. Same thing. <laughs> It scoops a lot of the mid-range out It, it makes it a bit too bright for my taste, yeah. personally. I'm going to show you a Tommy Emmanuel trick as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He always said when he uses acoustic guitar amplifiers, he doesn't point the amp at the audience. He just turns it round so that what you hear is all the room reflections. So listen, uh, in fact, what, while you're playing, okay. I will spin this so you'll see what I'm doing. Here all we right. go. You can, of course, if you decide that you know you want to try and you're playing live, or you want to even record an amp sound. Mm. Of course, you can play around with spinning your amp round to your heart's content <laughs> until you get a sound that you like. Um, let's hear what the little Fender sounds like. And again, okay. you've got um, less power on the Fender, different speakers. You know, I think the this amp's about a quarter of the price of this one. So, um, and again, I didn't pick the Fender for any reason other than it's very popular, and but there's lots of other brands of amp in and around this price that are popular too. And in fairness, if you're sort of thinking, what about something to sit in the middle that's not as dear as that, a bit dearer than that, then 100% go look at like the Fishman Loudbox series. That's yeah. great and sits sort of in the middle. But here we go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. it doesn't sound a quarter of the price, but it doesn't sound as nice either. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it, yeah. If you were playing in a band or something and there's lots of other noise going on, I'm sure that would be fine just to you know, yeah. lift and it up. So look, we, I mean, typically that little run through there was definitely uh, a very, very usable live rig yeah. setup. So again, you can have this on stage, perhaps this sits a little closer to you for your own monitor monitoring. Give the sound man the DI so that you know that sound can come out the PA as yeah. well. I think when you're particularly for performance, whenever you're trying to uh, amplify an acoustic guitar, it's always going to be a compromise to some extent. Yeah. But for me, I look for something that doesn't affect the kind of feel of the guitar because sometimes you play an acoustic guitar that sounds great acoustically, and then you plug it in and it's a completely different instrument yeah. and it responds differently and stuff. Yeah. But this, you know, this actually works really well. I think it's sounding good so far. Um, I think, you know, it's pretty universally agreed that if you've got a nice sounding acoustic guitar, you are going to want to mic it up. So we are going to yeah. move over to that now. Mm. You know, of course, for all the reasons we said at the beginning, you know, if you, if you use a microphone, you're, you're, you're fixed to a spot, you know, you can't just yeah. sort of run around the stage. Typically, again, these can be quite fragile. You know, you've got to drop one of these, expensive mm, mistake, yeah. feedback, all kinds of reasons why a mic may not be an ideal live solution. Yeah. But for recording? Recording, it's, you know, it's perfect. And I do know a few people who, who use a mic and a pickup live, right? but then just only use the mic in the front of the house, don't use it in the monitors, because that's when you start getting real problems with yeah. feedback and Cool, so look, we stuff. switch this off now. So even though the mic, the guitar's still plugged in, you are only hearing uh, the mic. <clears> so <throat> shall we start with the 57? 57, yeah, sure. Classic dynamic. I mean, tip, I, there's me sort of thinking, I, I know if I hold a 57 to my mouth mm. and I have it here, I'll get 100% volume, whatever. If I have it here, I'll get about 10% of the volume, you know? Yeah. So, when, you know, when you're recording with a, a dynamic mic, are you conscious of that or do you just have to turn the gain up on the, on the mic? I think, it, yeah, it, uh, it, 
It depends, which is not a very helpful answer, is it? But um, yeah, it, it really it depends on the room you're in, and depends what kind of thing you're playing. But generally, if you you know if you're recording, you can turn the gain up as long as you've got a reasonable preamp. So I'll, this is just the just the fifty seven. Mm -hmm. So 57, it's a cardioid pattern mic, which means you've got sort of like an ice cream cone. So, you know, it should perfectly pick up uh, the sound that's coming sort of straight off the acoustics, probably not picking up a great deal of the no, room resonance. Uh, can you just show again, what's it like as you, because mic placement on an acoustic yeah. changes the sound a lot as Hugely, well. Hugely, yeah. I mean, I my preference normally is to point it roughly at the bridge if i'm just using one mic mm -hmm. quite often you use you know another one at the 12th fret or whatever but so if i if i i'll, I'll play and kind of mm. rotate myself <laughs> I mean, even me sitting here, as you spin around, the yeah. guitar changes the, the characteristic of the tone. I always kind of think as well, I know when I've done videos before in the past and my natural inclination is to sort of move a bit as I'm playing, and I always get told off, if, it, if you've mic'd a guitar up, you've got to be very conscious of the fact that like, no, 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 if that's the sweet spot, yeah, it's, <laughs> you, know, you have to try and develop some good mic technique. Yeah. But, you know, it, it helps if you've got headphones, I think. But. Right. Um, so most people will be familiar with the SM57. In itself, it's a, a affordable microphone, but you, you can go even half the price of a, you know, you can spend 40, 50 pounds on a cardioid uh, style dynamic microphone and then it'll sound pretty similar to that, won't it? So yeah. 57s you can pick up for 80 or 90 pounds. You know, it's not, not an expensive microphone. Our other microphone is a Neumann KM184, which is quite a lot more money than the, um, SM57, they're about yeah. 600 pounds. It's a, you know, you see these in a lot of studios yeah. as a, you know, again, it's a condenser microphone, so much more sensitive, um, but, uh, and a more niche as well. You know, you, you the SM57 you can use for lots of things. Mm. KM184 you'd probably use for, you know, a drum overhead or a stringed instrument microphone. Yeah, they're a bit more delicate, a bit more kind of high fidelity. Yeah. So anyway, let's have a little listen to okay. what this sounds like. I'll do this, I'll move around again, if okay. like I did with the yeah. last one. So. So there you are. So, I mean, these videos are always <clears throat> slightly awkward for the presenters because, of course, <laughs> all we hear in every single sound clip is just the sound of the <laughs> guitar. Um, but I suspect what you're hearing now is uh, a, a tone that is more representative of, of the, what the guitar sounds like. I suspect yeah. the 57 has got a slightly narrower frequency response. Generally, um, yeah. Maybe not quite as um, able to capture the overall expressiveness of the guitar. Yeah, but... You know, fifty-seven is less than a hundred quid. So, yeah, and you, and you could absolutely you could sing into the fifty-seven. You could you know you could just throw it down point, the stairs. Yeah, absolutely. Point <laughs> at a, a guitar amplifier. You can do lots of things with a fifty-seven. Yeah. I mean, my preference when I'm recording acoustic guitars, I generally use one small diaphragm condenser off-axis on the bridge. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's personal taste. But yeah, and and I suppose in fairness, you absolutely can go and buy affordable versions of a KM one eight four for under a hundred pounds. Yeah, I'm um, thinking. I'm sure we. Is it like a, a SE one or whatever? I mean, again, yeah. have a look on our have a look on our website. You're looking for these pencil style condenser microphones. Um, well, what else are we going to say? What else? I mean, should we just try and should we just try and do something where we're back into the AER using a little bit of the DI, a little bit of the mics, a little bit of the... We're just going to try and capture our ultimate yeah, I think acoustic that's, guitar it, tone. Yeah, it's worth talking about... Because like, when you're recording, people normally use microphones, but I know a lot of people, I think Tommy Emmanuel does it as well, who plug in just to get a DI tone as well, in case you want that really kind of immediate 
response to, yeah. to give it more attack or whatever. We, yeah. we were surprised. I mean, you'll see in the in the Tommy video, um, his guitar is mic'd up because during sound check, you know, we mic'd it up. Uh, but it was also plugged into this exact amplifier as well. And then he got the rubber bung to put in the sound mm. hole and decided that uh, the best sound that he got was just the DI with the rubber bung. So even though we left the mics in shot, they uh, they weren't used at all. And it wow. did sound amazing, yeah, yeah. you know, really, really cool. But look, so I'm gonna plug back into the AR um, and have a really, really low guitar sound in the room. Turn it around a little bit. I'll blend in a bit more of the- And then uh, you're gonna hear Kind of like a bit of everything here, like our ultimate, hopefully, acoustic guitar That's tone, it. you know. I'll start with some long chords mm. on the C. So there you go. Hopefully that are a few informative and useful uh, tips and tricks on how to amplify uh, your guitar. Uh, any technique for recording or yeah. playing uh, live with a guitar is subjective. Of course. If you come up with a way of doing something with a combination of equipment or whatever that you like and people you know like as well, then that's correct. I think, <laughs> yeah, you aim for something that makes you comfortable playing. I yeah, guess. absolutely. But this is this was just some some pretty conventional techniques that hopefully uh, you know you guys found useful. Um, yeah. that's it. Questions? If you have any, in the comments section below, and we'll do our best to to reply to those. Um, don't think there's anything else to say, is there? No, I mean, I just experiment with your own guitar, I guess, and when you're playing live. Try not to make it feedback too much. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like this. We'll be doing acoustic guitar videos hopefully every week on the channel yeah. with Ben. Uh, anyway, we shall see you next time. <laughs>